It's a story that seems ripped from the pages of a novel. Three men, responsible for keeping the beacon of the Flannan Isles lighthouse alive, suddenly gone. No distress calls, no signs of struggle, just an eerie emptiness. As we investigate this century-old mystery, we'll confront the chilling possibilities and the lingering questions. What happened in this remote corner of the world that led to such a baffling vanishing act? Nestled amidst the wild, tempestuous waves of the Atlantic, off Scotland's west coast, lies a small, windswept island known as Eileen Moor. It is one of the Flannan Isles, a rugged archipelago in the Outer Hebrides, where a lighthouse stands as a solemn sentinel. But this isn't just any lighthouse. The Flannan Isles Lighthouse, steeped in an eerie aura, is infamous for the mysterious disappearance of its keepers in 1900. The story of this lighthouse begins in the late 19th century. Its construction, a monumental feat, was overseen by David Allen Stevenson, a member of the renowned Stevenson family, famed for their lighthouse engineering. From 1895 to 1899, George Lawson of Rutherglen undertook the arduous task of constructing this 23-meter, 75-feet-tall beacon at the cost of 1899, equivalent to over 230,000 today. Every material used in its construction was hauled up the daunting 45-meter, 148-feet cliffs directly from supply boats in the churning seas below. The completion of this lighthouse was not just a triumph of engineering, but a beacon of hope and safety. On December 7, 1899, its light pierced the Atlantic darkness for the first time, guiding ships away from the perilous rocks. This cylindrical masonry tower, with its balcony and lantern, stood proudly against the elements. But the Flannan Isles Lighthouse was more than just its structure. It featured a unique transportation system, a set of railway tracks that facilitated the movement of provisions and fuel. This system, powered by a small steam engine, was a marvel of its time, featuring a humorous reference to Clapham Junction, a busy London railway station. The railway tracks formed a semicircular path around the island, with one branch leading to the eastern landing and another to the western side, both characterized by steep, challenging approaches. This innovative solution was essential for the keeper's survival, ensuring a steady supply of necessities, including the 20 barrels of paraffin required yearly for the light. However, this marvel of engineering and human resilience would soon become the backdrop for one of the most baffling mysteries in maritime history. A mystery that begins with the Keeper's disappearance, an event that transformed the Flannan Isles lighthouse from a symbol of guidance and safety into an enduring enigma. December 1900, a time of year where the North Atlantic's chill grips the rugged Scottish Isles. Amidst this remote and haunting landscape, the Flannan Isles lighthouse stood vigilant, until something went inexplicably wrong. The first inkling of a mystery came when the steamer Arctor, journeying from Philadelphia to Leith, noticed the lighthouse's guiding light was uncharacteristically absent amidst a blanket of poor weather conditions. Concerned, the ship's crew logged this anomaly, unknowingly initiating one of the most perplexing maritime mysteries in history. When the Arctor docked at Leith on December 18th, its report reached the Northern Lighthouse Board. This alarming news prompted immediate action. The lighthouse tender ship Hesperus was dispatched immediately to Eileen Moore. However, adverse weather conditions delayed its arrival until December 26th, Boxing Day, a day usually filled with celebration, now shrouded in uncertainty. Upon reaching the island, Hesperus's crew found an eerie stillness. The usual signs of life, the hoisted flag, provision boxes readied for replenishment, were conspicuously absent. Captain Jim Harvey, sensing something amiss, attempted to contact the lighthouse keepers, James Duckett, Thomas Marshall and Donald MacArthur, by sounding the ship's horn and launching flares. But the island remained silent, devoid of response. Relief keeper Joseph Moore was then sent to investigate. Ascending the steep steps to the lighthouse, he was greeted not by his colleagues but by a surreal stillness. The entrance gate was closed, so too was the main door. Inside, the scene was disquieting. The clock stopped, beds unmade, a meal set but untouched. It was as if the keepers had vanished in the midst of their daily routines. With a sense of foreboding, Moore returned to the landing stage, relaying his findings to Captain Harvey. Harvey then sent two more sailors to aid Moore in a thorough search of the premises. The lighthouse, now a beacon of mystery, revealed few clues. 
The lamps were clean and refilled, yet a set of oil skins remained, hinting that one keeper might have ventured out in haste, leaving behind his protective gear. Their search extended to the rugged, storm-battered west side of the island, where signs of a recent violent windstorm were unmistakable. A supply box, situated over a hundred feet above sea level, lay smashed open, its contents scattered. Iron railings were twisted out of shape, and a section of the railway track, once firmly embedded in concrete, had been uprooted. Most tellingly, a massive rock weighing over a ton had been displaced. On December 29, 1900, the Northern Lighthouse Board dispatched Robert Muirhead to unravel the enigma surrounding the vanished Flannan Isles Lighthouse Keepers. Upon his meticulous examination, Muirhead noted something pivotal, the severe storm damage at the West Landing. He deduced that Ducat and Marshall had ventured out into the storm to secure the supply box, risking their lives against the ferocious seas. But what of the third keeper, MacArthur? Known as the Occasional, he was known to have left the lighthouse unexpectedly in just his shirt sleeves, a decision that breached the lighthouse rules. Muirhead speculated that MacArthur, seeing his colleagues in peril, had dashed out in haste to warn or assist them, only to be swept away by the same violent waves. Muirhead's conclusion was heartbreakingly simple yet plausible. A massive wave, an unexpectedly large roller, had overwhelmed the keepers, dragging them into the sea's unforgiving depths. This theory was grounded in the harsh realities of nature's unpredictability and the perilous location of the lighthouse. But Muirhead's theory was far from a proven fact. In the days following the investigation, the Flannan Isles lighthouse mystery captivated the public's imagination. With no concrete answers, the door was wide open for theories and speculations, each more intriguing than the last. One theory that captured the public's attention was the idea of supernatural forces at play. The Flannan Isles, often shrouded in mist and legend, were ripe for such stories. Some locals whispered about the Phantom of the Seven Hunters, a spectral presence believed to haunt the islands. This theory, while spine-chilling, had no tangible evidence to support it, but it added an eerie layer to the already mysterious tale. Another speculation that took hold was the possibility of a giant sea serpent or a massive seabird being responsible for the men's disappearance. These notions, reminiscent of mythical creatures from ancient lore, though fantastical, Igi had reflected the human tendency to fill the void of the unknown with elements of folklore and myth. The idea of a deliberate disappearance also surfaced. Some speculated that the keepers might have planned their vanishing act, perhaps to escape debts or start anew. This theory raised questions about the personal lives of the keepers, but like the other speculations, it was based on conjecture rather than evidence. Among the more ominous theories was the suggestion of foul play. Given the isolated nature of the island and the challenging living conditions, it was thought that tensions could have escalated among the keepers, leading to a tragic end. Yet, without any bodies or concrete evidence of a struggle, this remained a mere hypothesis. Then there was the theory of a foreign power's involvement, suggesting espionage or abduction. The late 19th and early 20th centuries were rife with international tensions and intrigue, leading some to wonder if the keepers had stumbled upon something they shouldn't have or were taken by a foreign entity. This theory too lacked substantial backing but added a layer of international mystery to the story. The more grounded theories revolved around natural causes. The harsh weather conditions and rugged terrain of the Flannan Isles were well known, and it was entirely plausible that a tragic accident caused by a sudden storm or rogue wave might have swept the keepers away. This theory aligned with the superintendent's conclusion, but did little to quell the public's fascination with more sensational explanations. In recent years, a more analytical approach has been adopted, with experts examining factors such as weather patterns, maritime records, and historical context to shed light on the disappearance of the three lighthouse keepers. One prevailing theory in modern discourse centers around the harsh and unpredictable weather conditions typical of the Scottish coastline. Some researchers propose that the keepers, caught off guard by a sudden and violent storm, were swept away while attempting to secure equipment outside the lighthouse. This perspective is bolstered by historical records, indicating that severe storms were not uncommon in the area, posing a constant threat to those stationed at remote locations like the Flannan Isles. 
Another theory that has gained traction involves the psychological and emotional strains inherent in the life of a lighthouse keeper. The isolation, monotony and challenging working conditions could potentially lead to mental strain or breakdowns, resulting in erratic behavior or poor decision-making. Some have speculated that this stress, combined with the challenging environment, might have led to a tragic accident or an impulsive decision to leave the lighthouse, ultimately leading to their demise. In the end, the Flannan Isles lighthouse mystery remains just that, a mystery. Despite theories ranging from rogue waves to human error, the truth behind the disappearance of James Duckett, Thomas Marshall and Donald MacArthur still eludes us. What's your theory? Could a new perspective unravel this century-old puzzle? Share your thoughts and join the ongoing quest for answers, and have a lovely day.